still angle in there with maybe Charles and some yeah. of those young Yeah, people. well, all the, guy, all the guys are doing really well. So, I mean, I'm at a point right now where it's just kind of you're letting the cream rise to the top. So we got, we're deep enough to, you know, mix and match it with different packages and things and such like that and kind of putting in strength. So whatever Coach Rossi wants to run defensively, we got guys with – we got a good enough mixture where we can have – Zone corners in, our man corners in, our blitzing corners in, whatever it may, whatever it may be. How deep do you think you are? Um, you have a number right now. I couldn't really tell you a number like that right now. It all looks, it all looks comfortable when you're going against the same color jersey all the time. So that's hard to say, you know. How has Ed Woods looked uh, since you brought him in? He was not here in the spring, of yeah. course. How's he been acclimated to uh, Um He's really great. He's been been a really great teammate. Um, he's really a quiet assassin out there. He's the kind of guy that. Uh, says less and does more. It was what, what, what I really like. Um, has a has a chip on his shoulder. You know, he plays and practices like he has stuff to prove. And I think uh, he's going to be a guy to really help us be better in the back end this year. And Brantley, you coached him in the spring. Yeah. How's yeah. he coming along? Very Stay. good. Just uh, just trying to make sure that, you know, he protects himself and, you know, uh, him being a little slight in weight, but he's he's dynamic. He has speed, ball, ball skills, high level of confidence is what I really like. Uh, he really believes he's a lot better than he may be, which is a great thing because he he's hard on himself and he pushes himself to make plays. How important has How it been to maintain that West Coast pipeline? Uh, well, it, I think it's been very important because the kids will come. Like I said, if you get them on campus here, and you know that's half the battle, you know. So um, they will travel. The times are different now from back in the day when I was a West Coast kid coming here. Like no way you'd get a West Coast California kid out here. Well, that, that that's that's not true. Yeah, you are. Yes, You're I am. Proof to that. Yep. It can happen. <laughs> yep, it can happen. Um, what about Rockford too? Because he's got a, got oh, a yeah. lot of experience as a young mm -hmm. kid last year. What have you kind of obviously seen his development this year? Oh, yeah. Chance has shown a lot of strides as far as, you know, being comfortable and, you know, going out there to try to make plays instead of just try to be in the right place. That's next level for him is like, hey, man, pull the trigger and go make a play. You know, I understand that you understand the defense, but now let's go, let's go play some football too. The younger guys, I mean, you know, you brought in some freshmen. Uh, yeah. Denson? Denson is uh, with Coach Blue now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So, how, what have you seen from the young guys? Um, yeah, um, like the, both of the guys, well, I got two new guys in my room. Is um, You got Andrew Brinson. Brinson. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. He was, you said Denson, but I was Andrew yeah. Brinson, and then, you, you know, we have. Um, we have Keyshawn, Kada, Keyshawn Williams. So, you know, both of those guys are really promising. I can't wait. You know, they're just, you know, getting acclimated to the college level of things. I think a uh, little bit more weight room time, stuff like that, they're going to be really special. A lot of your guys, especially, um, end up being making their first impact on special teams. Yeah. Do you have some of those younger guys yeah. between you and Blue? They all like yeah. the, fre the true freshmen I'm talking about, like mm -hmm. they're going to be like, okay. We yeah. need to get this guy on the field. Yeah, those guys are, are fighting. Good thing we are deep enough to where if they're not ready yet, we're not going to be pressed to have to do it. And so um, hopefully those guys step up and take that role. They're getting the reps and they're in the depth. Let's see if they can be that that guy. You know, Coach, it's great uh, having you as a part of the program. But on a personal note, have you had your aha moment that you're coming back home, having this homecoming after having such great travels in your coaching career? Oh, yeah. Um, that, that was kind of early on, right like, right before spring or right when I got hired. When it, basically, that it, it kind of came fast for me. It was surreal when I got the call from Coach Smith, and then uh, he was like, hey, man, how you doing? You uh -huh. know, and it was the conversation started like that. I got chills. Uh -huh. like, oh, OK, yeah. yeah. So, no, nah, it, it's been great, man. Uh, been welcomed with open open arms and mm -hmm. it's been a real nice homecoming. Yeah. How does that help you on a recruiting trail when you can get a little bit more personal insight to what this environment is like and things like oh, that? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it helps. It helps more so on the parent aspect when you're dealing with the parents of the aspect. Baby? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so it's like, look, man, we, we can take guess what? We got Walmart and we got Target out here too. Sure. I don't think it's just there, you know, uh -huh. that type of thing. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just kinda understanding like, hey man, we can do the same things out here and it might be you might be a little bit more special because because you are from the West Coast right. or from somewhere else, you know, that type of right. thing. What right. has stood out to you most recruiting the Midwest and most importantly, the state of Michigan? Um, what stood out to me the most is probably being like, it's really like, it's, they all, everybody got players. Everywhere you go, they, they everybody got their pocket of players and things and such like that. You just gotta go dig in and, and develop those relationships and get those guys in for, to come work for the Spartans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Jeremiah Hughes, when he was mm -hmm. in the portal, what did you see in him and how was he been doing? Position flexibility was the main thing that stood out. Uh, him playing a lot of 
a lot of games over at uh, the last place he was at um, from LSU. He played a lot of games, um, and then he did it at a lot of different positions. So he played a lot of corner, he played a lot of nickel, he played some safety, and he did special teams. So him, that was more, I guess, sexy or attracting, being that he has a few years left on his clock to be able to come play for us, and then he plays a lot of different positions. So kind of trying to cross-train him and see what all the things he could do, and uh, hopefully it helps. Cavazos similar? <laughs> very similar, very similar. I um, kind of knew him from back in the day when I was recruiting, and so it just kind of came up where he was leaving North Carolina and it was like, hey, well, we're looking for a few guys that can we can plug and play, and both of those dudes have been really great transfers along with Ed. Those those three uh, have been tremendous for the room. Any of those guys or corners in general that can go to replace Nickel? I know that's not your position, but are they – Flexing that? Yeah, you know, we're cross training them all, and then we're going to see how it all pans out because Coach Blue has some pretty good nickels in his room already. So we just cross training them, and then, you know, how the season goes. It's a long season, so, and it's very physical. So we want to be able to be covered on all bases. Yeah. We, we've been hearing a lot about depth and competitiveness at defensive tackle, inside linebacker. Mm -hmm. Same thing at corner where it's, it's coming down to the stretch in terms of like who goes on the field to begin with, but yeah. a, lot of, a lot of player rotation. Yeah, a lot of player, yeah, a lot of player rotation, which is a good thing because uh, the style of ball we want to play, we want to we want to play with a high high effort all the time so guys get tired and they won't feel bad about, hey, let me go get catch a blow while my boy goes in there and take a couple reps, those type of things. Is there anything about Rossi's defense that's um, unique in terms of the way the corners fit. You know, like Saban had his quarter turn back in the old days. Yeah. Everybody's got their little things. Yeah. That they, they offhand jam with Harmon. Yeah, yeah. But is there anything with Rossi where they do the corners? Or was it kind of universal in some ways? Or yeah, was it I, I, I would lean more to saying kind of more universal where uh, Coach Rossi is kind of open to, you know, well, this is the scheme, this is how I want it to look, and this is how I want it to fit. You add your sauce into it as a position coach, so which is really cool, um, you know. But a lot of the things that I do are things that he want, or that's on his film already from other teams that he coordinated. So he pretty much lets uh, Coach Blue and I get after it and get those guys right. Did you see Rucker and Brantley once they went through the spring and got a handle on the new defense? Have, have accelerated since then. Have you seen? Yeah. Even though they're semi-veterans, I mean, chances are yeah. freshmen. Yeah. But have you, have you seen those guys like? Yeah. Any more traction? Yeah, yeah, cool. no doubt, no doubt. They're, they're, they're out there with a lot more confidence. Like I said, it's a big thing when you get corners that can call out the coverage and call out the adjustments along with the safeties that you're cooking with grease then. Yeah. With you guys being like a week away and um, that's like your first real test of the season because mm -hmm. scrimmages you can only, you know, yeah. figure out so much. Um, how, how ready do you think the defense is? Or do you just kind of go into the first game with no expectations? Like what? How, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I kind of look at it as like the quiet before the storm. That's how the guys are. That's especially after today's practice. That's kind of how they gave me a feeling. Like the way they came with their lunch pail and all that, ready to work. Like it's getting close to game time. Yeah, it was very encouraging for lining up against somebody else and seeing how they play. With you guys being only eight days, sorry. Um, with you guys being only eight days away, I mean, what are the biggest? areas of emphasis just heading into this last final stretch of getting work in before the season starts? Mm, I would have to say just uh, being locked in is a different situation, situational football. You know, just the key things, we, we've been so much on technique and our scheme and now it's kind of getting into, you know, preparing for the opponent and things that they do and then it's knowing the situations that they may do it in. So those are things that as coaches we're trying to get those guys prepared for so it'll be second nature when it happens. But also when it comes to situational football, doesn't it? Some of it just has to come by the experience that you get in actually being put in different situations, right? Like you can kind of like paint or put up different scenarios and stuff. But some of it they just have to kind of experience it to learn from, right? Yeah, or, I mean, there's a lot of the experience cures a lot. Mm -hmm. But you know, as coaches, that's my job to get them get them ready for that those moments and at least have introduced those moments to them before it happens. Yeah. Video. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate no, it. Yeah. Other than Nick Marsh mm -hmm. and um, Montori, mm -hmm. who in the wide receiver room has impressed you as you work against those receivers? Man, those guys, uh, Hawk rolls them out there. Uh, uh, those guys get after it. Um, you know, and always when you got a when you got a quarterback that can put the ball in hard places, it, it makes it really hard no matter who's out there. But you know, that whole room in there is is pretty impressive as far as from. He has a lot of depth in there where he can do different things that he wants to do as far as those guys are getting after it, blocking, 
uh, running routes, um, you know, special teams, those like just, man, all, all those guys as a whole, you know, are doing really well. Second scrimmage, what did you, what were your observations with your group? Mm -hmm. How did you, what did you need to get done that day? And what were your, what was your final analysis? Um, um, uh, just kind of like the technical stuff of the techniques, getting our eyes, having sloppy eyes because we were being too nosy, too nosy or too jumpy to try to make plays to impress because they're battling for position as far as first string, second string, or whatever they look at it. So that's where the technique kind of flew out the window because we kind of approached this game as like that that last scrimmage as like, hey, this is a separation game. We're going to see who can do what. And then you notice some of the the not paying attention to the smallest details within the techniques, trying to make plays and things and such like that. So now me as a coach has got to bring that back down because we're getting ready to go into a game. We don't want those same eye violations or hand hand holdings and things like that to show up. I know that you have a hand in the entire room, mm -hmm. so it's blue. Nikai Martinez, mm -hmm. what did you see about him on film? How's he been doing? Uh, he's a he's a he's a big time playmaker. The guy's a He's a striker when he gets down in the box and then he's very comfortable in the deep deep middle of the field or the deep quarter. He, he's a ball hawk back there. So, you know, obviously he's getting more and more confident within the scheme and communication and stuff like that. So it makes us more comfortable on the island when you got a safety constantly talking to you, telling you he's there and has your leverage. I got you. I'm going to take that route. You take that route. Things such like that. He's coming into that. So I'm looking forward Dylan to Dylan Tatum, he's still in safety or is he in? Dylan Tatum is playing. Ball? Yeah, he's playing a little safety in nickel. He's not. He's been hasn't been in the corner room since uh since I've got here so he's running around and hitting people he's a I think he's a sawed off wheel linebacker sometimes right. I'm like well, you know, the way he fires around and is physical uh well, can't wait to unleash him at game time is it left safety and right safety or, or boundary and field or yeah there you go yeah. boundary and field yeah, yeah. and which yeah. one is Dylan Dylan um he the, well blue cross trains so everybody plays everything gotcha. yeah yeah so everybody plays so looking everything. forward to getting the season going? yeah no doubt let's get it going <laughs> sure. And um, in terms of preparing, you know, you talk about preparing for opponents now. Is there an additional challenge when it's the first game? You haven't gotten any film of the other team yet this season specifically? Yeah, that's always tough. Um, you know what I'm saying? When you have a, a new opponent that you don't really know much about, and then especially now with the transfer portal era, I mean, it makes it tough to, you know, kind of imagine a guy or watch him for where he left from and then imagine him in that offense when you didn't get to see it so you know it, it, it poses some challenges but everybody's dealing with the same thing week one and again flip Thank side you. you know you're running new system and everything you know how to use that to your own advantage per se well yeah that's why i said everybody's in the same boat so the same thing they're looking at us we got transfers in and we got a new uh, coaching staff on defense and everything so they're they're looking at probably minnesota's film from coach rossi but then they're kind of like well how would this corner play in that defense so unknowns to them too so just one more in. Coming from the West Coast, has there been a big adjustment coming uh, schematically and everything coming from the Pac-12, you know, back to the Big Ten? Well, not not really, not yet. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Everything is it's all football right now. Um, obviously, the opponents bring the different, you know, strategies and things and such like that. So when we get against um, some of those West Coast teams, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna have to change some of the some of the schematic uh, strategy that we're gonna be working with.